Some of the new members of the European Parliament have been getting up extra early to find themselves a place to live in Brussels. Former Greenpeace campaign director Yannick Jadot won a seat on the French Green Party list. He knows what to expect in terms of shuttling between Brussels, Strasbourg and his constituency during the new five-year legislature and is determined to make the Belgian capital, European capital, his principal residence. One of the big problems of the European Parliament is that it doesn't have decision-making powers in several important areas. The Parliament today is only consulted on the common agricultural policy, so we have to strengthen the power of the Parliament. Its members must be more credible and legitimate. That means they have to make the Parliament their base. 736 members will be on the new Parliament's roll call. That is fewer than the previous Assembly, though it's not an effect of the record low voter turnout. The Parliament was downsized slightly in the interest of manageability as it grew in number with European Union enlargement. Further changes are clearly needed, say veterans as well as newcomers. With the ruling French centrist UMP party, Dominique Baudis is a returning member with the still largest centre-right group. This former mayor of Toulouse is also current director of the French Institute for the Arab World. Europe is strong sur le plan economically, commercially, commercially uh, but politically uh, Europe is effect. weak. And this is for a number of reasons, notably this rotating six-month presidency, which prevents Europe from having real leadership. Belgian former Prime Minister Guy Verhofstadt is just joining the European Parliament. He is a well-known federalist who promotes such ideas as a European army and taxation. This Liberal Democrat is in favour of more European integration to solve common problems, notably the current financial and economic crisis. What I hope for is that we're really going to defend European interests in the European Parliament. I also hope to find a majority there that will oblige the Commission and the Council to defend European interests better and to come up with a common strategy to combat the financial and economic crisis. I don't think we can get out of the crisis with 27 different national plans. <laughs> More than a touch of glamour will also grace the new parliament. Frances Rashida Dati left her job as Minister of Justice to become an MEP. A new interest in European politics will leave less modelling time for Romania's Elena Basescu, daughter of her country's president. Lithuanian who wants to be a millionaire presenter Aruna Svalinskas won a seat. Italian Prince Emmanuel Filiberto didn't quite make it. The more controversial new arrivals include far-right British National Party leader Nick Griffin. He carries a conviction for inciting racial hatred. Dutch members from the far-right Party for Freedom, led by anti-Islam Eurosceptic Gert Wilders, will be taking their places with a strong wave of support from Netherlands voters. The new European Parliament is more fragmented than the last, yet reconfiguration will not only apply to fringe parties. The British Tories, vowing to follow a different vision of Europe, have pulled out of the Conservative European People's Party to form a separate group. Analysts such as Daniel Gross doubt this will increase the Tories' influence. One can already say now that the Conservatives will remain the largest group and the only question is how the many small Eurosceptic parties will find together, will get together, form a new group and how the UK Conservatives will try to fit themselves into the picture. They risk being marginalised. The three largest groups in the Parliament, though they kept their respective positions, have fewer seats than in the past, though the Green Group gained. This Parliament will not have much appetite for profound reforms. It will probably more or less follow what the Council is giving them, especially in terms of financial markets, where the Parliament itself doesn't have very strong ideas, and whatever comes out of the Council will probably going to be rubber stamped. Flemish socialist new MEP Katalena von Brempt worries about a risk of stagnation. 
Unfortunately, we have a very conservative and even a more anti-European parliament than we had before. And that shall have not very good results, um, uh, for instance, on um, uh, the social policy, for instance, on the policy regarding the environmental challenges. I'm a little bit afraid that there will be a standstill instead of a go-ahead in, in terms of European politics. Hey, Patricia. The change of parliament also has an impact on the thousands of lobbyists working in Brussels. Paolo Nicoletti is with one of the biggest consultants. It's an institutional change. It means we need to establish new contacts with the new MEPs, see what functions they will assume. And we need to start finding out what their positions will be on the different aspects of European policy. Obviously, we also also have work to do with our clients. The new legislature's inaugural full sitting will be on the 14th of July in Strasbourg. The first task at the plenary will be to elect a president and 14 vice presidents. There will also be decisions on taking part in the different committees. Some MEPs already know their preferences. A big part of our future will be decided in the Mediterranean, so that's obviously one of the dimensions of the European Union that motivates me the most. Also, as I have been elected for the southwest of France, I will follow closely everything regarding aeronautics and space. While some prepare to start a new life as Europarliamentarians, others are leaving. Dutch socialist Jan Wiersma, after 15 years on the job, has some valuable tips for newcomers. One piece of advice, this is a big parliament, and so don't expect to know how it works in one year. Secondly, invest a lot in informal contacts, and don't limit yourself to the official meetings. You have to realise that your group is your base. Big challenges lie ahead. Among the most important the MEPs will be dealing with are reform of the financial markets, the Lisbon Treaty reforms and a new agreement on climate change that is expected to come out of the Copenhagen summit in December. In a European Parliament showing a marked shift to the right, new consensus-seeking, debate and forging of constructive compromises begin again.